Hi, I'm Jim Covington. Today is May 29, 2013. And I'd like to welcome you to this week's issue of ISBA State House Review. The General Assembly is scheduled to adjourn uh, for the spring on May 31st, which is coming up very shortly. I'd like to talk to you about seven bills that have either passed both chambers or appear to be on their way to pass both chambers. The first bill is House Bill 1773, introduced by Representative Jim Sasha from Freeport and Senator Tim Bivens from Dixon, which amends the Common Interest Community Association Act, and it prohibits such an association organized under that act from entering into a contract with uh, current board members, and that has passed both chambers. The second bill is Senate Bill 1565, introduced by Senator William Delgado of Chicago and Representative Emily McCasey of Lockport. It amends the Probate Act to allow a court to vacate a short-term guardianship for a minor at any time after the appointment of a temporary custodian under the Juvenile Court Act if, one, it is consistent with the best interest of the minor under the Juvenile Court Act's criteria, and two, after notice to all parties including the short-term guardian, as required under the Juvenile Court Act. That's awaiting a concurrence vote in the Senate. The third bill I'd like to talk to you about is House Bill 2473, introduced by Representative Dennis Ribelletti from Addison and Senator Mike Conley from Wheaton. Uh, last year, there was a number of changes to the body attachment statute uh, to cre create more notice and create and stop any unfortunate situations where people were being arrested uh, and uh, allegedly for not knowing what was going on. And this simply goes in and says if you're enforcing a child support order or judgment, uh, those that statute does not apply to the court when they're enforcing a child support order or obligation. The fourth bill I'd like to talk to you about is Senate Bill 1768, introduced by Senator Kwame Raiola of Chicago and Representative Ann Williams from Chicago. It creates the special court, the Supreme Court Special Purposes Fund, in which the Supreme Court, by rule, uh, may change certain statutory fees to defray the cost associated with electronic filing and case management systems in the reviewing appellate courts. Uh, an example of that fee would be the $25 uh, appellate fee that you have to file now to, to file an appeal and other uh, registration fees for the practice of law under certain uh, statutes in the Business Corporation Act, the Professional Service Act, and that sort of thing. And that's path both chambers. The fifth bill I'd like to talk to you about is Senate Bill 1042, introduced by Senator Don Harmon from Oak Park and Representative Ann Williams. Um, and it amends the, also of Chicago, it amends the Recreational Use of Land and Water Areas Act, and it kind of creates a bifurcated system of liability, if I get this correctly, uh, so that owners of land who permit, without charge, a person to use their property for, quote, recreational or conservation purposes, close quote, do not incur any liability except for willful and wanton failure to guard or warn against a dangerous condition, use structure, or activity. But, own, uh, but owners may still incur liability if the owner invites or charges a person who enters the land for recreational use. That has passed the Senate and is awaiting a concurrence vote on House Amendment Number 1 today. The sixth bill I'd like to talk to you about is House Bill 1247, introduced by Representative John D'Amico from Chicago and Senator John Mulrow from Chicago, and it prohibits using a handheld cell phone or personal digital assistant while driving, and it ex exempts certain things such as the hands-free or voice operated mode, or it also exempts uh, the use of a headset and the electronic, electronic communication device that is activated by a single button to initiate or terminate a voice communication. Um, the second or subsequent violation of this is a moving violation on the Secretary of State abstract, and the initial fine is 75, which goes up in $25 increments for subsequent convictions. That's awaiting a concurrence uh, in the Senate on a, a concurrence in the House on a Senate amendment. The seventh and final bill I'd like to talk to you about is House Bill 1898 that has passed both chambers. Uh, it's introduced by Senator Daniel Biss from Skokie and Representative Laura Fine from Glenview. It changes the uh, U, U, uh, UM coverage for what you have to buy to drive in, in the state of Illinois. 
and it increases uh, the minimum liability policies from 20 to 25 for the injuries to one person, from uh, 40 to 50 for injuries to more than one person, and from 15 to 20 for property damage. And that would apply to insurance policies written or renewed after January 1 of 2015. That has passed both chambers. And we will see you next week.